what is going on you guys welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at how you can add microphone usage and speech recognition to your ios app so if we hit this button here we get this nice looking overlay similar to siri of course the ui is slightly different and we can tap on this button to begin dictation and as you see here it starts to transcribe everything i'm speaking and we actually have customized this to automatically stop dictation once I stop speaking. So let me be quiet for a few seconds. So there you saw it there. Once we stopped speaking, it figured out that we are done with our voice input and it dismissed itself. And we're going to basically implement this, take a look at how we can do some minor customization, how we can get the final text out of the uh, controller and all that good stuff. So that said, make sure you absolutely destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the channel and the videos quite a bit. Subscribe if you're new. Get excited. Get Xcode ready. Let me stop rambling on and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. We're gonna stick with a single view application template and let's call this project my Siri. Save it to our desktop and let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is bring in the framework that's going to allow us to easily set up microphone usage and speech recognition. Now all of this can be done with vanilla Swift and I've got a follow up video that will dive into the semantics of this under the hood. But for now, let's open up terminal since we're going to use Cocoa Pods and we're going to CD into our project. Let's do a pod in it. After that, you can open up the newly created pod file by doing an open pod file. And the Cocoa Pod that we want to bring in is called Instant Search uh, Voice Overlay. Let's lowercase this P, close up text edit, and run pod install. And once this is good to go and done, you will see this green installation message, which is the thing we care about. And it looks like it's successfully installed. So now we can close up this Xcode window with a command W and we can open up the workspace by doing open project name .xe workspace. Let's expand our Xcode window to give ourselves some more room to work. Let's expand the project tree over here and let's also select a simulator hit command r to build and run to make sure nothing has broken after our installation and we should see our empty app pop up here in just a second hopefully maybe not there it goes okay cool so now we've got our empty app everything's compiling let's get into the implementation so the first thing you want to do before we jump into the view controller and write our code is we want to essentially allow uh, our app to request permission for two things. The first thing it needs permission for is of course the microphone so we can actually get user input. And then the second thing we need to request permission for is speech recognition. So Apple has a framework under the hood that is a part of uh, their machine learning libraries that allows you to pass in audio from the microphone, so speech and supply a language and it'll actually transcribe and also spit back to you uh, what the speech was in a string. So it's pretty nifty. But to do that, we're going to go to the info P list. And here we want to add two uh, privacy strings. 
So a privacy string is the uh, string that is used in the permission request alert that you may have seen in other apps. Um, so something along the lines of uh, like Instagram wants your permission to use the camera for blah, blah, blah. So we're going to say privacy. And the first one we want is microphone usage description. So we're going to say, uh, please allow access so we can spy on you. Uh, obviously, it goes without saying, don't use this in your actual app. And the next one we want is uh, speech recognition usage description. And for this one, we're going to say, please allow access so we can be even more creepy with our app. So hit Command S to save those two. And let's go back to the view controller and get into the code. So the first thing we want to do is import that framework, which is instant voice uh, overlay, uh, instant search voice overlay. And let's create an instance of the controller that this framework offers. So we're going to say uh, voice overlay equals uh, instant voice. Actually, I think it might just be voice overlay. There it is, voice overlay controller, like so. And to present it, it's actually fairly easy uh, and get the text out of it. But before we do that, let's create an outlet for a button. And when we tap this button, we're gonna basically present this controller. So let's put an outlet there. Let's set its background color. Let's do system red. Uh, let's also set its title color to be white for normal. And finally, let's create an IB action function for did tap button. And we're going to hook this up in a storyboard in just a second. But in here, we can basically use the controller uh, parameter or controller uh, property rather. And we can say start. Uh, and you'll notice there are two variants and we want, let's see, we want the one that starts on the view controller with a text handler. And I guess we can just go with the first one here. So we wanna start on self and the text handler uh, has a, I believe text and final bool and the error handler has an error, I would assume. Uh, so hopefully those are the correct parameters that it expects. So it looks like it's not. So let's click into this and see what uh, what it expects. So if we scroll down, you'll see here is the function and this start uh, or this text handler is of this type. So let's click into this. And this type is a function that has three parameters coming in, returning void. So we need to add a third one. And let's also look at this error handler to see what's in here. So if we go into this one, this just has an optional error returning void. So let's go back to our controller. Um, and what I just did there, just clicking into it, uh, it's pretty common people do that because sometimes you just don't know what the expected parameters are and uh, people will type alias their completion handlers and their closures, so it becomes difficult to know what parameters are expected here. But it looks like we need a third one, and I'm not too sure what parameter comes into that third one, so we'll just do an underscore for discardable. And now you'll see that everything highlights. Uh, we should be able to hit Command B to compile, and we successfully compile. So in here, what we can do is we can simply uh, say if final, uh, we can print to the console, final text is text, else we can print to the console in progress text. And before we hit command R to build and run, let's head on over to our storyboard and bring in that button and connect the outlet in action. So let's grab a UI button, drop it on in. Let's set some constraints. 
So we'll say 100 from the top, 20, 20, and a height of, let's do 55. And let's click on this to drag our action to our button, touch up inside, drag our my button outlet to the button. And finally, let's change the title of this to uh, start dictation. And let's hit Command R to see what we get. So we should have our button here, tap it. And the first thing we should get is uh, this to allow us to give permission. Let's see what we got on our console down here. If I can drag this up. So in here, it's basically registering, okay, the ID, so that's irrelevant. So in here, let me drag this over here. Basically, it's gonna ask us this. We're gonna tap this to continue. It's gonna give us our permission prompt and it has a string in here that we provided. We're gonna continue with it. It's gonna give us now the additional permission response, so we're gonna allow. And now you can see that we actually have this popped up and it started to capture everything I'm saying right here. And it's fairly performant and fast, which I think is pretty neat. And the other thing that actually, while I keep talking on, you'll notice in the console here is, as I keep speaking and the text gets longer and longer, we're iteratively printing out to the console the captured text. And once I hit this to stop the dictation, you'll see that we capture the final text down here and the pop-up screen uh, dismissed itself. So pretty nifty in my opinion. So that said, how do we customize this, right? So we can customize a bunch of things about this controller and I don't wanna don't jump too much into the weeds with this uh, since it can get pretty, uh, pretty long-winded, but the controller also has a delegate property, which is a voice overlay delegate. And if we assign that to self and add the delegate up here, Let's click into it with a command click, and you'll notice that there is this function in here for recording text final error. And if we bring this in, we can basically get the delegate events for uh, the text as it's recorded. And if we want to do something for um, the text as it's being spoken, we can do it here. So something could be such as customizing the user interface. Um, you could put this controller as a child controller and do a variety of things with it. The other thing you can do in here is uh, determine if you want the uh, audio to start auto recording. So there's auto start, auto stop, auto stop timeout. So if we say auto start is false and auto stop is true, this should be start, whoops, start like so. And then the timeout is basically if the person stops speaking, uh, after how long should it automatically stop? So this takes a time interval, which is seconds. So let's say five seconds. So if there's no more audio input after five seconds, it'll automatically stop. And I'm also gonna comment it out this print so we're only going to print to the console once the user has completely stopped uh, speaking and the controller dismisses. So yeah, so let's hit Command R to build and run one more time. Hit this to start speaking and notice that we have to hit this because we don't auto start. So once we hit this, now it's going to start listening and notice now we're not printing to the console as I'm speaking here because we commented out that print statement uh, in the else block. However, once I stop speaking in a second for five seconds, it should figure out that we've finished our uh, audio input and auto dismiss itself. So let me stop talking. Okay, so it looks like the actual uh, text coming on screen was a little latent there, but once we uh, stopped talking and it basically wrote out everything that we had said, so it transcribed it all, 
it automatically dismissed. And we see here, we get our print statement of everything that it picked up on. So that's basically it. That's how you can add a very nice looking overlay similar to Siri or any of the other voice assistants out there, uh, like the Google Assistant where people say, okay, Google, um, and any of that jazz into your app. So I personally used this before and it adds a nice little customization to your app and you can also expand it quite a bit and customize it to fit your needs. Uh, looks pretty cool. It's a nice way to allow a user to just speak instead of uh, traditionally navigating. And it's pretty easy to implement with this framework. So like I mentioned, uh, under the hood, this is simply using the speech framework from Apple as well as the uh, microphone. Uh, so you can actually import speech directly and speech has all this functionality in it but of course this uh, framework uh, basically hides all of that for you and gives you this really clean minimalistic um, API to use all this stuff but in my next video uh, or a follow-up video I'll be diving deeper into how to set this up from scratch so that said if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm helps out a lot uh, if you're new to the channel uh, welcome and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to say hi. I try to reply to every single comment uh, as fast as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.